when we talk about God blessing man, we are talking about God in man working blessings with man. So the first foundation uh -huh. that says Abraham paid tight out of the spoil is questionable. So we see clearly that Jacob's encounter mm -hmm. led to this vow from his encounter that he had with God in the dream. Mm -hmm. So why should this encounter that Jacob had become a law for other people? When we talk about God blessing man, we are talking about mm. God in man working blessings with man. Welcome to Nyanza TV, another beautiful episode here with Mama Evelyn Watson Annan, aka Asasaya. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Today I'm discussing an, a very important topic in religion. Most religious believe that paying 10% of your earnings, your gifting, your profit to your spiritual group becomes what makes you wealthy. Tight has become the order of the day in the church. As the governmental institutions are charging 10%, 15% of tax, the church is taxing 10% of tight. So TNT, right? There's so much to learn today. The foundation of tight is my topic. Don't be annoying. Be, don't be angry. You've learned something. But this is a new thing to learn. Take your books. Go back and learn. Today, there is so much I'm going to share. The first ever time I'm speaking about tight, the concept of tight. But I can't get to see Doc Palm, Doctor in your palm. I'm coming away today with a beautiful episode. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Join this family. We are learning each and every day. I know it's helping you. If you're a new subscriber, I welcome you on board. I'll be right back. Doc Palm is back with all new exciting time with your medical doctors and health professionals. Did you know that Doc Palm has introduced all new opportunities to chat with your preferred physician for free? Yes, you heard me right. Chat consultation on Doc Palm is free. Download Doc Palm on Google Play Store and App Store. Doc Palm, convenience. convenience. Doc Palm, your health in your palm. Terms and conditions apply. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. This concept of tight is really eating me up on my channel. Please, and a very big please. I want you to take us back. The foundation of tight. You've been learning so much. You've all learned. You keep on <laughs> learning every time. So anybody, anytime we come to you, you want to find out your new learnings and the, the informations you have that uh, we can also follow and also learn. Okay. And I think today you, you will help us to learn more. We're talking about the concept of tight, that foundation of tight. People are paying 10% of everything, but yeah. they're not seeing thing, anything in return. Tell us about tight, 10% of it. Why do you have to pay tight? All right, thank you for having me. First of all, I'll greet all my followers, my family, the Great Awake Movement, the School of Sons, the Light Bears who are also pushing forward with their great knowledge. And I'm glad to be a member of that platform as well. And also to all our viewers, mm -hmm. those who are watching us on Mysteries, <laughs> Nyansa TV, please comment, share, and subscribe. Subscribe. Tap exactly. it. Come on, tap it down subscribe. there. Subscribe. Mm. Today, we are going to talk about the foundation of tide. The foundation of tide. Uh, it is a beautiful thing that we already have an idea of what a tide is and the various forms of tithes that uh, we could accept, initiate, and stand by. So this is going to serve as a deeper understanding for those who are into tithes and those who want to come into tithes or those who want to know more about it. So that when you are making a decision, you make the decision from a well-informed point of view. Great. That will also help you not to indoctrinate others by your understanding okay. and feel that your understanding should be what everybody else accept. When we talk about tight, what is tight? Okay. Tight is simply 
one tenth of anything that you set aside. It's just to say one tenth. It has been a religious term because from our religious perspective, we have come to the understanding that a man who ever lived paid a tithe or one tenth and out of that one tenth it has become a part of the norm of our religious bodies in that sense we also have to incorporate the principles the rules the regulations the laws that have generated from generation to generation dispensation to dispensation to strengthen the power of the titan we have to embrace it because if you like i said every law or religion has a stronghold okay that stronghold enables the religion to thrive okay a religion without a stronghold will not be able to survive seasons because people will learn and they will grow and out of that they may come to a point of questioning for understanding okay so what you want to mean is that every religious group has something that holds the people yes of course so so the moment they become enlightened the likelihood that they may end it. They will ask questions. They will ask questions. Yes. Is high. That's what we call stronghold in religion. Yeah, of course. Every religion must have a stronghold. If it doesn't have a stronghold, it will be difficult for that religion to thrive. Okay. That is why it's necessary to have a stronghold in a religion. That stronghold enables the religion to get grounds in whoever is practicing that religion. Mm. So, as tight grew from generation to generation mm -hmm. it started growing a lot of branches as well okay because it, it has become a part of the people mm -hmm. and it has to make room for generational growth to merge into that religion or mm. into that principle mm. so anytime you can check just do your, your your research you realize that there are some things that some religions did not practice from the beginning but today they have incorporated it as part of the religious rites and rituals because really every religion must have its stronghold mm. that keeps it and as it grows it grow other branches that will help other people to come into that religion okay some are also beginning to let go of certain things that they were holding on to of course as, as a group religious group anything anything that religion gives out anything whenever you see any form of religion has given out a tradition mm -hmm. it means there's a new one that will replace it okay like we will not do it this way but now we'll do it that way okay you get what, I, what i'm saying okay that's what i'm saying from generation to generation the strongholds of the religion must grow it must have other branches that will allow other people to come into the principle mm. because the more we incorporate other things into the religion the more stronger the stronghold becomes i get it but as people grow they grow in knowledge they grow in wisdom they grow in discovery mm -hmm. so they will start asking questions i get it and answers must be provided for these questions okay. that is why it is important for us to explain this tight so much and so well that those who are seeking for the knowledge will know whether they want to continue whether they want to jump on board or not okay so it's not it's not a duty to tell you not to pay tithe no 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 uh, no, no, no. Did you explain the concept well exactly you? they do your own readings and e find it exactly you your final decision exactly wow. all forms of giving has a reason a purpose okay all forms of giving mm. including tithe offering whatever giving you know has a purpose there is a reason why that giving was initiated so let's go into tithe let's the go. first time we heard of tithe was when abraham met a spiritual man called melchizedek okay paul referred to this melchizedek as a man without a mother and without a father okay and that nobody knows his root or where he came from but he was a king in salem and a priest in the house of god 
This is the description that is given to Melchizedek. Okay. Now, Paul also says that this Melchizedek has is a similitude or has similarity to Jesus when we compare their priesthood and okay. what they stand for. Okay. This Melchizedek has become a, a, a topic of interest because it was Melchizedek who received the first tithe okay. ever mentioned in the Bible. Okay. So you can't go with Melchi you when, can't. It comes to, when it comes to uh, the Bible. Of course. So he has a, he's a pillar yes. in terms of time. And what he represents. Okay. Okay, what he represents. Number one, we are told he doesn't have a mother, he doesn't have a father. There's no root to link him to. Mm -hmm. He is the priest of God and a priest of Salem. Mm -hmm. So when you do your research and you look for the meaning of the name Salem, and you look for the meaning of the name Melchizedek, it should at least give you an idea of the communication that is going on in the Bible. Have you done that? You can do it. You I can do to, everything. Do oh, no, let's, let's remain with the topic. <laughs> <laughs> now, Abraham, uh -huh. we are told that Abraham was making a journey. Okay. What informed the journey? His nephew, Lot, went to Sodom and dwell in Sodom. Mm. There was a war in Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham decided that he was not going to allow the life of his nephew, Lot, to waste away because of the war. Mm. So he was journeying back to Sodom to save Lot. To help them fight. Exactly. To save Lot. Okay. So in Genesis 14, would you like to read well, let, the scripture? Let me open so in Genesis 14, we see Abraham journeying all the way to Sodom so that he will go and be a part of a war that was already happening. Mm. Genesis chapter number 14. 14. The verse number. Let's read from verse 16. The verse number 16. Yeah. The 16 says that he recorded all the goods and brought back his relative lot and his possessions together with the woman and other people. So Abraham, when he won, went to the war, he was able to recover his nephew Lot mm -hmm. and recover the women and recover other people. Mm -hmm. And possessions, right? And possessions. Okay. 17 says, after Abraham returned from defeating Kadolome, and the kings allied with him, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Shaveh. Mm -hmm. That is the king's valley. Okay, so Abraham, after he had recovered Lot, the women, the other people, and possessions, mm -hmm. he was still on his journey because he had recovered and he was going. Mm -hmm. Wherever he was going, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But we are told that he came to a place called the king's valley. Mm -hmm. That is where the king of Sodom met Abraham. Okay. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. And he, he blessed Abraham, saying, Bless thee, Abraham, by God most high, creator of heaven and earth. So Melchizedek also met Abraham mm -hmm. in the king's valley. Mm -hmm. And he gave Abraham, or shared with Abraham, bread and wine. Mm -hmm. Carry on, please. And praise be to God most high, who delivered your enemies into your hands. Then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. So Abraham gave him a, a tenth, tenth of, of everything. everything. Now, let's pause here. As our okay. viewers are watching us, mm -hmm. everybody just start thinking about the whole story. Mm -hmm. What is that everything that Abraham gave a tent out of? The thing he went to war. And what the, are those the things? Possessions he, the possessions? Mm -hmm. He mentioned possessions. He mentioned the people. I think he it's quite a number of thousands. So do you think that Abraham might have given out some women and other people as tight? Could that if, be possible? If 10%, ten, if ten percent, I, I, I might believe. Okay, I, I will rather, I mean, not go to that area. Okay. Let's assume mm -hmm. it's an assumption because mm -hmm. none of us knows better. 
in, because the story does not include everything. Okay. Whether he gave women as tight or gave children as tight or give we can't tell but we know that definitely he gave something as tight i get it and in our minds it will be the possessions okay the spoils mm -hmm. that he got out the of the gold, war the silver the things that he got out the sheep the cattle out of the war mm -hmm. okay continue please the king of sodom said to abraham so the king of sodom said to Abraham. Now came to Abraham and mm -hmm. said to Abraham, Give me the people and keep the goods for yourself. You give me the people and take all the goods for yourself. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, With raised hand I have sworn an oath to the Lord, God most high, creator of heaven and earth, that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a tread, nor the trap of a sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abraham rich. So Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have vowed to myself that I will not touch anything mm. that I recovered out of the war. Mm -hmm. So that you will not say that you made me rich. Mm. I will not touch anything. I won't take anything, not even a shoe what lace. Yes. That's what Abraham said. Mm. So what actually did Abraham give to Melchizedek? It means he did not, if according to this oath, it means he did not give anything to the king of Salem. If Abraham paid tight out of the spoil. Oh, it means he did not pay tight. Wow. I can't say, I don't want to make assumptions, but it's an opportunity for us to widen the understanding we have I get it. around the titan mm. because we believe that abraham made spoils out of going to deliver his nephew lot mm. in the war he took some possessions he, he, he recovered the women mm -hmm. he recovered the men and the king of Sodom said, you take all the possessions that you recovered and give me the people. And Abraham said, I'm not, I'm not taking anything. I've not even laid my hand on anything. Because I don't want you to say you made me rich. Mm -hmm. So I have vowed to myself, I will never touch anything that I made or I may have recovered from the spoil. Whoa. So was it that all the things that he recovered, help me, all the things he recorded, that he gave everything to him? So the question is, out of what exactly did Abraham pay tight? If he decided mm. not to touch any of the possessions that he took from the war. So let's, let's read the 22 again. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, with raised hand, I have sworn an oath to the Lord, God most high, creator of heaven and earth, that I will accept nothing belonging to you, but even the tread or the trap of a sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abraham rich. Not even a tread. Continue. And I will accept nothing but what my men have eaten and share the that only to thing, the, the only thing I have accepted is what my men have already eaten mm -hmm. and the portion of the men which went with me what they also ate oh. the, the possessions that i recovered in the war i only gave to the men what they would eat mm -hmm. and the men who went with me i fed them out of that spot apart from that i've not touched anything so when they were coming what were they carrying that Melchizedek? So the first foundation uh -huh. that says Abraham paid tight out of the spoil is questionable. Oh. You get me? You mean there's a lot of questions about Abraham It's, it's questionable tight. because the man said he is not interested in the spoil out of the war. And he has not laid a hand upon any of the things he recovered in the war. So that the king of Sodom will not say that he made him rich. Now, when Melchizedek was blessing Abraham, 
he blessed Abraham out of the relationship that Abraham had with mm. God. When you listen to the prayer, he said, bless you, Abraham, of the Most High God. Mm. So Abraham had a relationship with God. Melchizedek was aware, even up to date, some people are praying based on the relationship that Abraham had with God. Mm. So when they want to call on God, they call the God of Abraham. I get it. You understand? Mm -hmm. So this man said, I am already rich, made by my God, and I don't need your possession. So I don't touch you, your possession, to make me who rich. I want to be. So from the war, Abraham made a spoil. That spoil belonged to the people, not for him. Oh. He went there to recover Lot, mm -hmm. his nephew. So he did not take anything with him. He said he didn't take anything. He said he didn't take anything out of the spoil. So what exactly did he pay the tithe from? So that our mind will not be centered on he did something and God had to pay a tenth out of what he did. Or he got something and had to pay a tenth out of what he got. Wow. Because if we don't get clarity, it will mean that anyone that goes to war or does any kind of job must pay one tenth of that interest or profit or harvest to God. Mm. That, that's the concept we have now. Mm. Because the, the foundation itself, the foundation itself that says that it was out of the spoil that Abraham made that he paid the tithe. Now, Abraham is telling us that he had no interest in the spoil. And he has not laid a hand, Unable. not even on a thread, so that the king of Sodom will not say, it's out of the spoil that made Abraham rich. So how did he pay the tithe? And from what did he pay the tithe? That's the first thing. Just ponder over it. Okay. Now we are going to another concept of tithe. So here, me, this means that Abraham did not pay tithe. You cannot, we cannot, we cannot assume that he didn't pay tithe to Melchizedek. But then he is saying that he doesn't want to touch, he didn't touch anything. He didn't so touch as anything. As he said, uh, what at all did he receive before paying tithe on? That is left. Tithe was not paid. That is left for every viewer to go back, sit down, ponder over it, take the scripture, do a research on it. Because if I'm told that Abraham paid tithe because he did something and got profit or spoil out of something and he paid tithe out of it. So you are also supposed to pay tithe when you make profit out of something. And now you are reading, you've observed that the man said he didn't even touch what we say or we assume mm. was the reason why he was paying the tithe. Is it the reason why? Yes, the reason why he's paying the tithe is that he went to war. He made spoil, goats, sheep, cattle. You understand? Wine, bread, human beings mm -hmm. that he recovered, mm -hmm. and he paid a tithe out of what he recovered. And the man said, "Because I don't want anybody, including the king of Sodom, to say I that I was rich because I went to war and made spoil and took the people and the things." So I decided not to lay my hand on even a thread among the spoil. So he didn't touch anything. Is that what it means? Mm -hmm. If yes, then how did he pay the tithe? Let's ponder over it. So everybody will ponder over it. How let's, did he pay the tithe? Let's move to the next stage. The next stage of tithing is the Jacobic tithe. So Abrahamic one is gone? The Abrahamic tithe, this is the concept of the tithe. Okay. That he met Melchizedek. And you see, all the concept of tithe, the foundational concept of tithe, that I'm going to talk about, will show you one thing in common. They all had a certain encounter. They had a certain encounter on the journey. That is why they vowed or they promised. Nobody told them to give one tenth. Melchizedek didn't ask for one tenth from Abraham. It was an encounter that Abraham had that made him give. We are told he gave him bread and wine. That's the only thing in we the see valley. in the king's valley. That we see Melchizedek exchanging with Abraham. And Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth, we are told, of everything that he possessed. 
out of the war. No, he said he didn't bring anything. So that is it. So yeah. you ask yourself, from what are we supposed to pay the tithe? If the man that initiated the tithe didn't pay out of what he got, then where are we supposed to generate that tithe from? Let's go to the... So we go to the Jacobic Titan. So we go to Genesis 28. And let's see how Jacob also... Of course, Jacob is, is, is a descendant of Abraham. So he definitely had an idea of the Titan. He had been into Titan. He's worked around Titan. So he is very, very, very familiar with the concept of Titan. But let's see how he also. Jacob, uh, Genesis chapter number 28. 28. Let's go to verse 20 downwards. The verse number 20. Okay, the verse number 20. And I read. Let's, let's rather go start from 13. The verse number 13. Where Jacob had a dream. Okay. And then he saw, yeah. There above it stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham. You see, the God of who? Your father Abraham. So now, the communication that is coming from the God Jacob saw on top of the ladder, mm -hmm. because he laid on a stone. Mm -hmm. And on the stone, he also saw a ladder that was coming from heaven, heaven to the ground. Mm -hmm. On the ladder were descending and ascending of angels. angels. And God was sitting on top of the ladder. Mm. Or above the ladder, he could see God seated. Mm -hmm. And then he started narrating what transpired in the dream and what made him make the vow of tithe. Mm. From the beginning, he mentioned his grandfather, Abraham. Abraham. Isaac. His father, Isaac. Isaac. So you see where his concept of God his reverence to God, his knowledge of God comes from. Acceptance, accepting that that was God is through uh, his father. Yes, Again, that is the God of my father. So when he saw it, he knew this is the God of my father, Abraham, hmm. my father, Isaac. Continue, please. So I will give you and your descendants the, the land of which you are laying. It's 14. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. And you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All people on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to the land. I will not leave you until you, I, have, I have done what I have promised you. 16. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought suddenly the Lord is in, his place, in this place. And I was not aware of it. He, he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gates of heaven. So he said, where he was standing mm -hmm. is the gate mm -hmm. of heaven. Because that is where uh -huh. he had his encounter. encounter. Remember, Abraham had his encounter in Melchizedek. The valley. In the valley of the, the kings. kings. Okay. And he, out of it, whatever he experienced, he gave one tenth of what we do not know okay. or cannot specifically mm -hmm. point that this is what he paid out of or okay. not. Okay. Now, Abraham has also had an encounter. Uh, Jacob, Jacob has also had an encounter okay. with the God of his father. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he's saying that where he got the encounter is indeed the gate of what? Heaven. In that, in that sense, it means that for us to get to heaven... Well, let's get to the gate, though. Shanti Tree presents In Their Arbor Storytelling Family Retreat, Ghana, 16th to the 30th. Welcome back. So, so let me go to the verse number 18. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had split under his head and set it up as a pillar and pour oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Continue, please. 20. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and watch over me on this journey, 
I am taking and I will give and he will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's house. Then the Lord will be my God. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a ten. So we see clearly that Jacob's encounter mm -hmm. led to this vow. From his encounter that he had with God in the dream, mm -hmm. he said, if you are able to do these things that I saw in my dream, mm -hmm. then you will become my God. It's not based on my father or anybody. My personal ex experience with encounter. you. And this is what I'm going to do. If I have bread and I have clothes and I come back mm -hmm. from my trip, mm -hmm. I return safely. Mm -hmm. I'll give you one tenth of everything that I make out of the journey. So why should this encounter that Jacob had become a law for other people? So this is his personal dream. He decided to do that. Nobody showed him what to do. He decided to lay that stone as a pillar. So Nyansa, if you dream, mm -hmm. and out of that dream, the encounter you have, you set something aside to remind you of your dream and become a covenant between you and God. Must it be imposed upon me? Mm. To mm. also do the same as you did out of your dream. And this was not a law until Moses passed it as a law, according we'll to the come Bible. To Moses. Mm -hmm. We'll come to Moses. So apart from Abraham, this was the second time somebody was talking about tithe. And we didn't hear Isaac okay. talking about tithe. Mm -hmm. Probably he did. Okay. That is okay. Because he's the son of Abraham, mm -hmm. the man that paid tithe. Mm. All right? All right. Jacob happened to be the grandson of Abraham. And he definitely, undoubtedly, mm -hmm. could have heard the grandfather talk about Titan. Because in his prayer, he referred to the God of his grandfather, mm -hmm. Abraham. And he may have even practiced some form of these Titan. I cannot make assumptions now. Look at it. But Jacob stated clearly mm -hmm. that I am going on this trip based on the dream that I've had. If you, the God that appeared to me in the dream, who is the God of my father? If you are able to give me clothes and then give me food and I return for my journey, I will make you my God. Number one. And then I will move you from the sky where I saw in the dream mm -hmm. and bring you into the stone that I laid on. And it will be the pillar mm -hmm. where I will meet you. And I'll give you 10% again. And every profit I make or possession that I'm able to make from my journey, I will bring it here and give you one tenth of it. Now, so, so let me ask this. According to the Bible, every Christian is supposed to pay tithe so that God will open heavens and windows of heaven and pour out blessings. So he will prevent the devourer from devouring our, our work and all that. So tell me, don't you share the same assumption that we need to pay tithe for God to bless us? My understanding of that talk to us. That promise mm -hmm. or let's say that threat. It's threat. If you don't pay the tithe, he will allow the devourer to come and devour you. Oh. That is why anytime someone's business is shooting down, you are advised to do what? Pay your tithes. Because the more you pay your tithe, the more God does what? Blesses Stops you. the Yes, of course. So the scripture, the verse, uh, impress on us and on our intelligence that unless we have paid tithe, God will not stop the devourer from devouring our finances or our business, mm -hmm. then God becomes a conditional God. Okay, push it. So we are conditionalizing him. That is why I say the way you encounter God must not be the same way that I must encounter God. The fact that you had a dream 
and out of the dream you decided to make a vow and pay that vow to God does not mean I should live by the loss of your dream. So if you pay tight, is it wrong? No, we are not telling anybody that paying tight is wrong or paying tight is right. We are giving you the opportunity, okay, to learn much deeper about the topic, the subject, so that you will do it from well, from a well-informed point of view. Okay. You understand? A well-informed point of view. Because Abraham paid a tithe. Why did he pay a tithe? He met Melchizedek. Melchizedek as the king of Salem, who has no mother, no father, but he was a priest of God. And he said, Melchizedek served him with bread and wine. They sat down and they communed. And then Abraham gave him one tent. Out of what? We don't know for sure. People have paid tight and they are blessed. Others have not paid tight and they are blessed. Wow. There are people who have never paid tight in their lifetime, but they are blessed. Now, the problem we have is that we keep conditionalizing God. Okay. Because if someone has an encounter with God and he comes back and say, I had an encounter with God, I made a vow, I'm doing this and God is doing that for me. Then we assume that every individual must be under that condition that you also have to do it for God before God blesses you. Before Abraham met Melchizedek, was Abraham not blessed? He was. So where is the concept of you have to pay tight before God will bless you? So it's not like that. That is not how it is. It has never been like that until someone else interprets it to you differently. So now I'm giving you the opportunity to go and interpret it for yourself. Because there are people who do not even call upon the God of Abraham or Isaac or Jacob. Because the reason why Moses made this a law to the people of Israel is because the people of Israel are the children of Jacob. Who made that covenant? What the what am I supposed to look at before paying tight? Revelation, of course. Encounter, of course. Understanding, of course. If I want to pay tight, I must have a revelation that moves me to pay that tight. Okay. So there are some people that they will receive a revelation within their spirit to pay tight to certain people in their lives or in the circles of their lives. The tight is there to elevate or amplify the act of love. That is it. The act of love. So much so that if I am working from a different uh, angle of life, you are also working from a different angle of life. There is one among us who is not working at all, mm -hmm. but seems to serve us, mm -hmm. then the proper thing to do is that whatever we get out of what we are doing, we can give a portion to that Bless person. Bless the person. Are you with me? Yes. But the tithe has become like a condition for prosperity, a condition for good living, mm -hmm. a condition for stability. So if you don't pay the tithe, then God will not bless you. But that is not the point. And mm. I don't think any pastor says this. I don't think that any pastor, whether here no, no, or no. We, beyond. We, we hear people preach about this seriously that if you don't pay your tithe, things will be tight for you. You see, then God is a conditional God. Then that God that is being presented to you is a conditional God. And the universal God is unconditional. He doesn't bless you because you do something for him. As a matter of fact, when we say God blesses you, it's not like God throws blessings from the spirit mm -hmm. as you are sleeping. The next morning you wake up, the blessings will be all around you. No. When we talk about God blessing man, we are talking about mm -hmm. God in man, working blessings with man. Let me take that again. Take it. Who created you? God created what in you proves that God created you? 
life. The breath inside the life. The breath of life. That is why when man was made, the breath of God was given to man. Okay. So what is that breath that is living inside of man? That is God. That is God. And me, I'm also breathing God. Mm -hmm. I'm also breathing life. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. I am God, you are God. Mm -hmm. So God helped those who help themselves. Meaning, those who help themselves is the way God helped them. So I give you a helping hand, you also turn and give me a Of course. Hand. So God help those who help themselves. If we don't help ourselves, God is not coming to help us. Assuming there's a, a house by my house or your house, all they do is that they make sure they help each other in everything they need. Mm -hmm. And in our house or your house, there is nothing like we are helping each other. Each one for himself. Each one for himself. Among these two houses, which of them will say God has blessed them? Those that help themselves. Which of them will actually enjoy the blessings of God? Those that help themselves. Did God throw the blessing from the sky? No. Why? They help themselves. So you try, you're implying that it is God doing it. And the God is me. The of God course. is you. Of course. Where in the Bible was it made a law to pay tight? It is, you see, it's Moses that brought this as a law. Moses? Yes. Moses, when he was bringing the children of Israel, of course, the children of Jacob, from Egypt, he made it a law because one of the children, one of the children of Jacob was set aside so that he can do all the service, the spiritual service, the oracles, the mm -hmm. ordinances, everything mm -hmm. that concerns their prayer, mm -hmm. everything that concerns their sacrifices, okay. everything that concerns their rituals. Okay. This one son out of Jacob and his descendants are responsible for that duty. Okay. So therefore, as the other brothers go out to work, it was passed as a law because it was a vow that their father made to their God. So in that sense, the best thing to do is that as one is set aside, the rest of them will work and they will try to help their brother who is not working. So that they, they, he will also be doing the intercession for them. Of course. So you are paying them for a service. They are serving the entire family. When it comes to the spiritual... So if I'm a church and uh, my members are saying that pastor doesn't work, he intercedes for us, let's save 10% of our money and give pastor so the pastor can also have a living. Is that wrong? Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing. As uh, a matter would that, of fact... that come with blessings? As a matter of... What kind of blessing again are you, are you expecting? You are giving a man out of what you have. You are giving to that man for the service of that man. Where is the blessing you are expecting again? So this becomes paying the person. Of course. Okay. He is rendering a service to you. And out of that service, you say, okay, this service is beneficial to me. So let me give him a token of what I have made. Okay. And as the result, you choose to pay one tenth mm -hmm. and give it to him. That is the way of honoring the service is, is made in your life. Mm. But that does not mean it is God who is asking you to pay that tight so that he will bless you. So, so the pastor should not speak to it as if that is what God is saying. Without it, you're not going to survive in your business. If it is God that is asking for it, then the foundation of tight is shaky. Because the foundation says that Abraham chose to give tithe to Melchizedek. Okay. Jacob, out of his encounter, decided decided he will give a tenth of whatever he is able to recover. You understand? Mm -hmm. So God didn't impose on Jacob that you have to give me one tenth of what you recover. But Jacob, out of his own initiative, made that vow to God. Oh. So if you say that God is insisting for tight before he blesses you. Or it is tight that will cause God to command or stop the devourer from your business and your finances. Then you must go back to the foundation and correct the foundation. Because the foundation says otherwise. If you are paying tight to your pastor, your leader, whatever it is, and the purpose of paying the tithe is that he is rendering a service. And out of that service, he is not able to go fend for himself. 
So this is your way of supporting the pastor. And then that is it. Don't expect blessings from me. Don't. There is no blessing that is coming from me. Which blessing are you expecting? Have the windows of heaven are opening and no, you so, see, that is why you see those who don't pay tight uh -huh. are they not blessed? There are people who have never paid tight their life, they are making inventions, they are creating things, they are making money, they are establishing businesses. They don't pay tight, it's not tight that prosper you. Tight is a way that the family, that Abrahamic family, his children his grandchildren decided that they will relate with God through that one tenth. Now, and as a result, one of the family was set aside to perform these ordinances for that God and the other children should support them. So if your pastor is rendering a service to you and you feel that service is very crucial to your life and very important and you want to give something for that service, there's nothing wrong with it. Mm. But that is not God asking you to give him money so that he will bless you. Are you saying tight is just like seeing somebody in my society who is in need and I decide to say, oh, take this and help your family. Your child is not going to take school fees. It's just like that. I can do that. You can do that if that is the revelation. You see, that's why I say for pain tight there must be a revelation it touched my heart, heart, heart to help them. that is your revelation that's it so i decided to help the person exactly it is equated to like paying tight in the church there, there are so many forms of tight talk to me what are there the are so many we have treated some of them uh -huh. we treated the tight that are paid in three days or uh -huh. three years uh -huh. the yearly tight uh -huh. the weekly tight uh -huh. the monthly tight uh -huh. the tight that we give on baileys on corn on wine mm -hmm. on 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 animals the ones that you're supposed the to ones that you are supposed go and to and then chop yourself yes, the one that you have to gather people around you who are serving you who are working for you sit down with them with that tight and commune on that tight that is a way of even appreciating the people in your house for the service they render to you so pay tight from the perspective of revelation by just supporting if, your that, if that because Jacob's titan came out of a dream Mikra presents wash and shroud the vessel to the sacred forest the aquacide service are you ready 9th 10th and 11th of june sleep over at onyame kesikro the aquacide service are you ready call us now let me ask the last question mm -hmm. so in short you don't pay tight for blessings is that that will conditionalize say? God. You don't pay tight so that God will open heavens to you. No. Then why do you have to pay tight? You have to pay tight when you decide that you have to pay it. <sighs> when you, the individual, believe that you have to pay tight, ask yourself, why must I pay the tight? What have I seen that is making me pay the tithe? And to whom am I going to pay the tithe? If the pastor is rendering a service to you, and you feel that service that is rendering to you, you want to pay tithe, that's your vow. That is how you want to appreciate him. So you should not become law in the church or in any religious group that this must be done. It can be a law in a religious group, uh -huh. but that law is not supposed to condition God universally for everybody no if in your branch or your church denomination mm -hmm. say that we will do this every month yes this is you who have decided if you don't want to pay don't be a part of that organization because if you go to rome you do what romans do once you accept to be part of that group and that body the principle and the law that guide that body you must obey you understand and the tithe is not supposed to make you think or feel that your tithe must command God from, to give you blessings. So don't give and expect that God is going to pour blessing the next It Monday. doesn't work like that. Okay. If you are giving tithe, you are giving tithe for a specific thing. If you have a revelation of that thing, then be expectant of it. Example, Jacob said, if you give me bread and you give me clothes and I return for my journey, I will do what? I'll bring you 10% of it. Did he mention children? No. But someone can also say, I'm giving this tithe to this person or this pastor or this group of people or this. God, 
I am making a vow with you. As I give out this tithe, give me the fruit of the womb. The womb. Of course, it is not God that is saying your tithe is what is moving him to give you the fruit of the womb. Mm. That is your, your mentality. Mm. That's your understanding. I get it. You understand? Mm. I will not wait for God to tell me, or I will not go to God and say, you know something? I need fruit of the womb. I'm going to give you one tenth of my salary. Please give me a child. I'm not doing that. Because that will conditionalize God. I don't want the God I serve to be a God that only gives you out of condition. No. Ask. Because right from the beginning of our search into who God is, we are told that God is unconditional. Knock shall be open. Seek, you will find. Hmm? Ask, you will be given. What about that? He said, ask and you will be given. Uh -huh. So if we are even going by ask and you will be given, why is it that people ask and he doesn't give them? That they have to now pay before he gives to them. Or impress him with a certain token that without it, he will not stop the devourer. Is it a name that makes it difficult for us to understand or something? Because we have different forms of giving in the church. Mm -hmm. Why must we put the word tight on it? Because if, if just giving to support the pastor from your own will or thinking that the pastor doesn't do anything, you want to support the pastor, that is it. And I can I can decide to just put an envelope and bring it. Sunday, people do first offering. People do my first fruit to my pastor and all that, which is directly to the pastor. Then what about the tithe? You see, when we start imposing a family encounter with their God, on the entire universe this is the problem that you get what do you mean by that you had a dream uh -huh. you if you have a dream uh -huh. today uh -huh. are you going to tell the whole world that based on the dream you had they should stop eating something or they should stop doing something or you are initiating a new law that it must affect the whole world no 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 so why must someone's dream affect the whole nation the whole world that he had a dream and he said, God promised me this, that he was going to do it for me. And I have made a vow on what he has promised me. Therefore, the whole world, before God will answer your prayer, you have to do the same as I have vowed to him. Does it make sense? This is sad. <sighs> Let me end it here. You heard it. Go back. Research is not for my point. I'm also learning. Please, only. We are all learning. Online, relearn, very important. Go back, take the Bible, read. Don't read from your pastor's point of view. Don't go and take your pastor's preaching and let that become the basis of what we are learning here. Take it off. Read the Bible from your own view and understand the story. Thank you very much for watching. Doc Palm, thank you very much for the support. Doc Palm, doctor in your palm. This opportunity for you to have access to a medical doctor for medical consultation with no movement. Wherever, whenever you find yourself, you can have access to a medical doctor through direct video calls. Then the doctor will attend to you, give you directions. Sometimes first aid comes your way before you even get to the hospital. This is super. Doc Palm, doctor in your palm. Thank you very much for watching. It has been super here. On the first concept of mm -hmm. titan mm -hmm. one thing that i didn't touch on was uh, was the concept of god and that'll be my next episode we'll talk about god, Thank god you. because you keep on hammering and god and god you understand the concept of god are you ready don't miss it remember to subscribe and let me just uh chip this in for the it. understanding of our viewers Move it. if your pastor is giving you a teaching on tight or on anything Take the same concept, take the same knowledge that has been given to you. Have time to go into what has been given to you. Make references, search within it. Sit down and meditate upon it because if your pastor is giving you something, that is not wrong entirely. It's not wrong. But for you to be limited to that knowledge that you are receiving, so much so that you don't ask for understanding that is where the problem is okay so our advice to you is that whatever your pastor is preaching 
whatever knowledge you are receiving, mm -hmm. go home and search deeply into it and ask questions. Ask questions, if possible. When you get those questions, take some of them to your pastor. Because ask he will him. not have the time. Yes, he will not have the time to go into everything. But as you go over it, ponder over it, as Paul said, we have seen that the people of Beria, they are very, very, very intelligent. That whatever message that we give to them, the people of Beria or yes, Athens. Beria. Okay. The people of Beria, whenever you preach any concept of God to them or religion to them, they go back and they cross-check. They check to see whether what you are saying is exactly as it is written. They don't receive with faith. No, no, and no, no. They check the scriptures. So that is what we are supposed to do. If you go to church and your pastor preach, he, has, he cannot spend the whole day talking about one concept. So he has given you something. Go back home. Sit over the message. Dive deep. If you have questions, go back to him and ask him, Pastor, when I did a study on this, I came across something that I need clarity. Because I have this, that, this, that questions. You understand? Yes. Because you need to ask. When, mm -hmm. if we all start asking questions, the person that is asking questions will not be demonized. It's because other people don't ask questions. That's mm -hmm. why when you ask questions, you, become a, you become a demon. But if all of us are asking questions, pushing the pastor to speak, it will even help the pastor to go more into what he's giving to you because he knows that you will ask for more. Mm. But if you don't ask for more and you say what he has given to you is okay for you, then I have he, faith, will, I believe. He, will, he will remain where he is with you. Because Help that is what... to learn. Yes. If you, you say you are a baby, I'll give you milk. If the milk is okay for you, I'll continue giving you milk until you grow. If you grow, they will give you what you need. To build your body as an adult and can not you repeat, the baby. Can you repeat that? They will, they will watch it. They can re re rewind and watch it. They can rewind and play. <laughs> I love this rewind one. Rewind and play. So if you remain a baby, you keep on taking the milk and you're comfortable, you'll be there. Yeah. Until you decide that you are a grown-up, mm -hmm. they will keep on giving you the milk. Exactly. But if you grow up, they will change your meal for you. Yes. It's not wow. only the pastors that want us to grow. Not only the pastors. Paul said, I desire that I will give you the things that are more hard and solid in this thing that I'm teaching you. But you seem not to receive it. You seem not to grow. You seem not to mature. So you are remaining in the elementary things of this Christ we are preaching to you. Mm. And the elementary things are repentance, <sighs> baptism judgment and laying on of hands so you see the church Hell. is still remaining in repentance baptism laying on of hands and all that elementary concept when we are supposed to grow and receive higher things because the members don't want to grow so entirely we cannot blame the pastors if we are comfortable with it and we don't ask questions they'll give us what we want that's it thank you very much you're welcome remember to subscribe bye for now